patient. When your life's on the line, are you patient? A few months ago, I found myself in the emergency room, trying to take on the role of a patient. And I remember sitting in the waiting room, and I looked down at my hand, and it had swollen up like a big red apple. It was just pounding, pounding. I could barely move my fingers. And I was trying to be patient. You know, I saw the nurses bring other people to the back, and eventually they did take me back, and I got to see a doctor. Well, he said he wanted to run some tests. More patience, more waiting. And you know, when you're in the hospital, you don't have a lot of good things that run through your head. You have a lot of bad things. So I had all these reruns of these medical dramas where they had to amputate limbs, and it's a little dramatic, but that, that's what was going through my head. And I sat there, I just trying to be patient. It was just so uncomfortable for me. You know, eventually the doctor comes back and he treats my hand and writes me a prescription. Pretty much sends me on my way. And about two weeks later, my hands restore. And it's amazing the technology and the research that's been done, all the data that's been collected that led to that successful outcome. But I walked out of the ER that day and I got to thinking about health. And I really view health like a well. You have this structure that provides you access to this water, and the water is deep beneath the surface of the ground. And there's just this vast reservoir of water, health, life, energy, just waiting for you down at the bottom. But the bucket's just sitting there. I know I've got to take my rope and my bucket, and I've got to throw it down there, and I've got to reel it in. I've got to take in that water, that energy, that life. And I've got to do it every day. I've got to be proactive if I want optimal health. Because my well is unique, and your well is unique. And there's so many things that can come between us and our source of energy and our source of health. So we need to be more proactive as a society. Stop being so patient. Be patient with your doctors, but don't be patient with your own self. Be proactive. So what am I talking about here? Well, as a public health professional, I know that data drives discovery. So we need more data about us. Just like our fingerprints and our DNA, we're unique and our health is unique. And we're the only ones that can discover it. So what am I talking about here? Well, a couple data sources that we can look at. The first one is just our energy in. The foods and drink we eat. I'm sure you've heard it before. But how many people in here could tell me how many calories they ate today? Okay, we have a couple. That's great. How many people in here planned out their meals before they got here? Okay. That's really good. So we got a few people. See, I'm not, talk I'm not saying that we have to track our food every day for the rest of our life, but I've tracked my food enough to where I know about how many calories are on a plate just by looking at it. And not just that, but I can tell you about how many come from protein or fat. And that's just from a couple months of tracking. And it's amazing to me that we have such incredibly smart, incredibly talented people that have just completely disregarded this. It's like we, we get so focused on being excellent at one thing, and we lose sight of the fundamentals. So we've got our energy in, energy out. What are we putting our energy into? What are we creating? What are we sustaining? How are we moving our bodies? I was talking to a pharmacist recently, and we were talking about health, and she told me that for someone with diabetes, exercise is as important, or can be as important as their medication. And that's incredible. But exercise means something different to everyone. So wouldn't it be nice to have a little bit of data to take to your doctor? If you were a heart rate monitor while you were exercising, you could say, I reached 70% of my maximum heart rate, or 90% of my heart rate reserve. You know, that's the kind of data that our doctors can use, that we can use. 
So the next source is, is our experience. You know, as we go throughout life, we have so many experiences that you can't quantify. You know, the first one that comes to mind is just our energy level. You know, we have our energy that gives us the ability to do amazing things, but one minute we could be on top of the world and the next we could be crashing. You know, this also includes things like our attitudes. You know, I'm, I'm doing a project right now called The Best Attitudes, where I'm trying to find links between certain attitudes or beliefs and either health or not health. Because we know attitudes affect our decisions, and decisions affect our health, or, or whether or not we get a disease. So it seems logical that there should be some correlation. We get to right to the root of the problem. So these are just a couple data sources. And I, I know what some of you are thinking, like, I don't have time to do that. Well, this is some data that I collected in under one minute. A few months ago, I started wearing this uh, fitness band. And I just put it on in the morning, and at the end of the week, I'll just plug it into my phone, and this is what I get. And I don't have anything to do with the creation of this, but this is just one tool that you can use to get data about yourself. And the more data you have, the better decisions you'll make. So let me just step back. You know, we're talking about data. We're talking about improving our lives. We all heard that before. But what's the big picture? Well, according to the AMA, there's about a million doctors in the U.S. And there's over 300 million people. And these people will eventually become patients, most likely. So right now, this doctor has devoted their life to the study of, let's say, just one disease. They work their, their heart out, they pour their energy into it, and, and on their dying breath, they, they have a revelation, and they have the cure for diabetes. It affects millions of people. Well, what were these other 300 people doing while this doctor was pouring his heart into this research? How many diseases could we cure if we were all contributing data. Now, these aren't just diseases. These are people that are suffering. So that brings me back to my first question. When your life's being threatened, are you patient? There's so many things that can come in between you and your source of energy and your source of health that we have to be proactive we have to seek these things out and eliminate them. And as we stand on the edge of the future, let me ask you this. Can you track your life? Get some data? Are you going to use that data to increase your potential for greatness? And are you going to look for ways to contribute that back into the system for others' benefit? It's only when we come together and we actually do this, are we going to overcome our own health challenges and provide an opportunity for the people that are suffering to achieve their God-given potential? So track your life. Pick something. Start today. Because we've been patient for too long. Thank you.